Hello and welcome back to yet another video. In this video, we're going to answer the dreaded question of which programming language should you start with as a beginner. Specifically, we'll focus on Python and JavaScript. Really, when you're asking yourself what language to start with, the only real answer is that it depends. That's all there is to it. So with that, thank you for watching this video. Hit the like button down below and I'll see you in the next one. I'm just kidding, obviously. At the end of this video, you are going to know exactly which language you should go with. I'm not sure if you have this feeling, but I was always very confused confused about what different programming languages even mean. What is the difference between one programming language and another? Why does it matter what I choose? Does it matter what I choose? What if I choose wrong? So this video is exactly the video that I wish I had when I was first starting out. If you appreciate that, there's a like button down below, which you might as well tap. You might as well do it. It's completely free to do. And it's going to mean that YouTube will show this video to more people on YouTube so that more people can get into programming and learn this amazing skill and also choose the right language for them. For hitting the like button on this video, here's a picture of a cute puppy. And with that, let's get into the video. First of all, as a disclaimer, if you already know exactly which area of programming you want to get into, let's say you know that you want to be a game developer. In that case, you should probably learn either C Sharp or C++ that they use, one of the two. If you know you want to build iOS apps like iPhone apps, you just have to choose Swift. There's really no other option. So if that is you, then you can honestly leave this video right now and just go Google which language is used in the area you're most interested in and you'll be done. But I assume for most people, when you're getting into programming, you don't even even know the difference between all these areas. First of all, what even is the difference between different programming languages? What is the purpose of having different programming languages? Well, all a programming language is, is a way and like a syntax for you to talk to a computer. The computer doesn't even actually understand the programming language that you write, whatever language you're writing. All the computer understands is a binary. Like in specifically inside the computer, there's these transistors where electricity is going through these logic gates in a very intelligent way. This would be very difficult for humans to write. So that is why we have come up with these so-called high level programming languages where we can essentially write almost like English-like code. And then we have written different programs that compile this code first into this intermediate form called assembly language. And then there's a different program called assembler, which essentially translates this assembly into the computer understandable binary code. But that leads to the fact that you can essentially decide any kind of programming language you want. A lot of the decisions about designing a programming language are essentially the subjective decisions by the creators of those programming languages. So as a summary, the first thing you need to understand about programming languages, at the end of the day, they are all essentially the same. There's just different syntactic decisions, different decisions made about how to express these logical ideas, but the core logic of all programming languages is the same. So whichever language you end up learning, you're going to be just as good a programmer as someone else who learns a different language. And it just so happens that some languages are more used in some areas and some languages are more used in other areas. So really the thing you need to think about is what area of programming are you most interested in? And I know I just said that this video is for people who don't know that, but I'm just saying that I sort of try different areas and try to get towards answering the question of what you eventually want to specialize in because that is really the biggest determinant of which language you end up sort of maining throughout your career. With all of that in mind, why are we focusing on Python and JavaScript specifically? The simple reason is they are some of the most popular languages right now. So there's a lot of job demand for them. You have a lot of job opportunities for both of these languages. And let's face it, what you probably are looking for is to get a job, right? But the fact that they are popular also leads to the fact there's a lot of resources and a lot of different libraries and frameworks available and a lot of tutorials. It makes creating things fast really easy. The very high level, very easy to learn as a beginner and very easy to get to grips with with programming fundamentals. If you're convinced, which of them should you actually choose? First of all, let's talk about Python. Python is a language that is usually very good for scripting type of applications. If you want to, let's say, manipulate the file systems on your computer or you want to automate some boring tasks like I teach in all of these Python automation tutorials, for example. It's also really used in any sort of data science slash AI slash machine learning type of applications. So essentially anything where you're dealing with a bunch of data, let's say I'm trying to analyze my YouTube analytics using code and write some programs to like gain insights from it. These are all types of applications where Python is really popular. Usually people say that Python is the easiest to read and the easiest to write language in the world because the language is just designed in such a way that it's really sort of elegant. It's really easy and fast to write interesting programs. And it's a bunch of different libraries. I think more libraries than any other language probably. They have libraries for images 
image editing, for video editing, for merging PDF files, all these kinds of sort of manipulate sort of hacky type of thing. That might be one of the reasons why you're into programming. Python is really made for these types of things. But the downside of Python is that, first of all, because it's so simple, it sort of leaves out a lot of the detail that you probably should be learning. So I would say that Python is really good for beginners, but it shouldn't be the only language you learn. If you learn Python, then eventually you should probably take up another sort of a more lower level, more like traditional language. But again, just bear in mind that if you learn Python, if you learn any language, learning a second language is very easy. So then let's talk about JavaScript. JavaScript was essentially created to make web pages dynamic. Essentially, every time you look at a web page and there's something sort of happening there, either there's like a pop-up, there's like content updates or like maps or Twitter, boxes, whatever, that has probably been created with JavaScript. Because in the past, web pages used to essentially just be static, which means that when you load a page, it just displays information. There's nothing really dynamically changing. When web developers wanted to change that, they created a programming language that was specifically designed to work on the front end of websites. So in that part of the web that you actually see when you're looking at a website. So JavaScript is really often called the programming language of the web because it's not just the front end that can be written in JavaScript. There's also this framework called Node.js, which means that even the back end of a website, which can be written in a bunch of different programming languages, can also be done in JavaScript. So you can literally build a whole website from the ground up, from back end to front end, just in JavaScript. So this really allows you to just focus on mastering this one language and build cool websites without having to touch a different language. And because web development is where most of the jobs today are, there's a very strong reason for you to consider JavaScript. So it might seem to you that now JavaScript is a no brainer because we wanna get a job, I wanna go into web development, so I'll have to learn it anyway, right? But there's a couple of downsides. First of all, I think, and many people agree, that JavaScript syntax can be very confusing. So there's a lot of sort of weird things that can happen. People tend to prefer Python syntax. They seem to say that Python is easier to write and easier to read than JavaScript. Another thing with JavaScript is that there's a bunch of different frameworks that these sort of things that are added on top of the language that you sort of need to keep up with. So if you are the type of person who enjoys this, who enjoys constant constantly learning new things and constantly sort of unlearning what you learned before and then learning a different word framework is great for you. If you're not like this and you like the stability of some of the other programming languages, then maybe JavaScript and the areas where JavaScript is used is not for you. Okay, so based on all of this, what should you actually choose? Okay, so for job demand, I actually made a video in the past, one of the first videos on this channel where I essentially made the case to choose JavaScript and one of the reasons for it was that the job demand for JavaScript is much higher. But now that I was researching into this video and looking at a bunch of different sources, both in terms of salary and in terms of actually the number of job opportunities, I really couldn't come to a specific conclusion. One source would say that JavaScript is more popular. Another would say that Python is more popular. And it depends on the location. So essentially the conclusion is in terms of getting jobs, both of these languages are simply equal. I would say that whichever one you go for, you're gonna have excellent career prospect, excellent opportunities, and also excellent pay. If you really want to build applications that you can actually see physically on the screen, you want to build a cool looking website, maybe you're sort of more a more creative person where you want to design things in, in CSS, which you're also gonna to have to learn if you wanna make websites, then I would probably go for JavaScript. Whereas if you're more like me, where you enjoy writing logic, you wanna solve like algorithms and data structures, and you just want to essentially tell your computer to do cool stuff without having to worry about how to design something to look nice, then something like Python would probably be better for you. And that's also the reason why I ended up sort of being pushed more towards the Python side. But if you still don't know which of these camps you sort of fall into, what I would probably do is start with Python. Start with Python and specifically start with this course called Python for Everybody, which you can learn for free by auditing it using Coursera. The reason I would start with Python because I think Python is easier for programming fundamentals. The core programming logic like loops, if statement, I think there's more good resources available that are specifically focused on programming fundamentals with Python than there is with JavaScript. Then after that, if you ever see yourself wanting to go into the web development, I would then learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript through any basic web development curriculum. An excellent free option is the Odin project, which is essentially this full, completely free online curriculum on how to become a web developer. For both of these options, 
The courses that I nowadays use myself are by a platform called Zero to Mastery, who I am affiliated with. I think they are better because they have video courses that are actually interactive and sort of more engaging. So if you're into that, instead of the audio project, you might be interested in checking out their full online web developer bootcamp. And for the same subscription, you're also gonna get access to their full Python curriculum, which I did myself and I think it was excellent. And after that, they'll also have an advanced JavaScript course, JavaScript projects course, courses on data structures and algorithms on how to pass coding interviews. This is a full platform where essentially instead of paying for like a Netflix subscription, you can pay for a zero to mastery subscription to invest that money into your coding education. But if you're not willing to invest money, then starting with Python for everybody but Python and then doing the audio project is going to give you an excellent founding in both languages. And after that, I think you will, you will have an idea of which area you are more interested in. Or maybe you decide that actually I'm interested in something completely different. Maybe I want to build games. Maybe I want to build mobile applications. The best thing for you to do is actually just to keep following your interests. At every moment, just listen to yourself and think, what would I like to build? And then just follow that interest and see where it takes you. And I don't think you should be too focused on specializing too early because the joy of programming, at least for me, is to try different things in the amazing world of programming. Whichever language you pick, both of these languages have an extremely strong community around them. If you wanna get the most out of your programming journey, I highly recommend actually interacting with these communities to share your journey and connect with other people. People. And one of the best places to do that is a platform called Showcase. Showcase is essentially a social network built specifically for developers. Usually as developers, we would need at least five platforms just to showcase who we are as a developer. On Showcase, you can create a developer portfolio instantly and share your tech stack, top repositories, work experience, credentials, and more. They make it very easy for you to represent yourself as a developer and integrate into many different coding communities. For example, there are communities for Python for beginners and JavaScript for beginners where you can share your work and get a lot of value from other people sharing the resources they use and find helpful. And on top of all these community features, Showcase is also an excellent place if you're looking for a job. First of all, on Showcase, you can build a true network by adding people to your circle, which are people that you've actually worked with and can vouch for your work, which is really powerful when you're looking for a job. Then you can go into the find job section and set preferences for the kind of job you're looking for based on language, location, salary, and more. And the results will show which jobs are the best best match for your preferences. Lastly, you can use Showcase's Auto Resume Builder to automatically build you a resume based on your Showcase profile. It's an extremely cool platform and a lot of you have been following me over there already. So thank you for Showcase for sponsoring this video and you can go check them out by clicking the first link in the description down below. If you enjoyed this video, all I ask in return is that you tap the like button down below in the description. Completely free to do, you might as well do it. And if you're really convinced that actually, yes, Python is the language that I want to learn. I made this video, which many people have told me has really helped them decide on how to actually learn Python really fast. So I think this video is really going to help you. With that, let's keep coding and I will see you in the next video.